Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the pod. Happy to be here. Feels like it's been a minute. Um, it has been a minute. Um, took a, an unplanned break, which is fine. It's our podcast. We can do what we want. <laughs> yeah, I was away and then life mm. happened and now we're back. So it's fine. It won't feel like very long for you guys, but it always <clears throat> feels long once we miss more or like skip recording for a week. We're always like, it's been four years since we've recorded the podcast. It's been five years. Um, uh, is everything on your end? You got a win over the last couple um, of weeks? Do I have a win? Um, running has been going really well. I'm putting my legs up, actually. If you're on watching us on YouTube, you'll see me mucking around over here on the bench. Um, uh, yeah, running's been going really good. My race is coming up faster than I wanted to. Um, I just did a long run this morning, which is why I'm putting my legs up. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, everything's just kind of floating along. Um, nothing like crazy to report. No ginormous winds um, other than... It is finally warming up outside and Good. we are back to our backyard routine. And I really like that. And oh, I I did read outside yesterday while my child played instead of scrolling on my phone for like the whole time that we were outside. So I feel like that is also a win because I'm like, I could be reading right now. Yeah, we love um, that. I don't read enough, so. Yeah, I read like three chapters of my book. Good work. That's fun. Yeah. I also don't um, read enough. I always tell myself I'm going to read reading and running. I'm always like, I'm going to do this. But I'm like, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but we all know how running works out for you. <laughs> yeah, every time. every I'm surprised. This is the first summer where I was like, nah. Usually every summer I'm like, I'm going to start running. <laughs> so, but we, yeah. have, uh, we have put that goal to rest because it's just it's not it's not meant for me you know it's just not, not for good. everyone no um but i do have a little bit of a brain slash social oh. anxiety win which are always okay. fun um over the weekend i got the opportunity to be in a photo shoot help with a photo shoot um some of you know my partner some of you may not but he does a lot of things all the time. <laughs> um, and he does quite a bit of modeling, photo shoots, that kind of stuff. So it was like a lovely Saturday morning. And about an hour before he was about to leave, he's like, hey, do you want to come be in the photo shoot with me? And the win is that usually I would be like, no. <laughs> because I didn't have time to plan for it. I didn't have time to prep. I know one of the photographers, but like, a year ago, six months ago, my brain would have been like, ah, no, have fun. I'm staying home. But there's this little piece of my brain that was like, fuck it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I threw a couple outfits in a bag, did my hair, did my makeup in the car um, and just showed up mostly with the intent to just like help with the photo shoot. Um, and then one of the photographers was like, hey, can you be in some photos for me? And I was like, yeah, sure. And it was actually really fun. I haven't gotten all the pictures back. It was like this cool, like collaborative thing. So there's like three photographers and then like four models and they all just like, you don't get paid, but you get the photos and they all kind of like do their creative work together, which I think is cool. Cause then you don't have to like schedule a photo shoot with each photographer, it's just like the three of them. Yeah. Did their own thing while sharing the models, if that makes any sense. Yeah, uh, totally. it was cool. And the pictures I got back from one of the photographer were actually super cool. And like one of my new favorite photos of myself. So it was just a win that like the little voice in my head was like, yeah, go. And it actually was fun and cool versus keeping myself at home because I was too spooked of strangers. <laughs> yeah, I think the bigger win is that you were able to throw yourself together clothes and makeup in an hour. Thanks. Um, because I would be like still in my closet being like, what am I going to wear? The <laughs> only thing, like the thing I'm most thankful for is like I've spent time the last like year figuring out my style. Mm -hmm. um, 
and honestly like i find i operate better on the fly sometimes like i was like what clothes do i bring and my partner was like something that looks good he was packing like his overalls and i was like okay and that was all the info i got so i just like picked what i would normally wear if we were going out to yeah. dress that way um so it worked and it actually like fit the theme of what the photographers wanted to so that was nice but yeah sometimes for those things i almost find it easier to not be able to like prep and plan mm -hmm. like it's like okay hey, you have 20 minutes figure it out and then you just kind of have to roll with the punches which is new for me yeah yeah maybe that's a yeah i i always feel um like when i'm gonna go out somewhere that i'm not wearing like running shorts or leggings that I'm like I don't know what to wear does this pair of jeans fit me does this pair of jeans fit me today I don't know um I did go through like <laughs> I did go through all of my shorts like not my like running shorts but like my everyday shorts mm -hmm. um a little while ago and I don't recommend doing that like right before your period wow. um <laughs> not like, your best timing wow. <laughs> and then i was like oh maybe i should wait a week and try this again before i get rid of all these shorts. Yeah. um That's yeah funny. that kind of that kind of leads into a little bit of what we're talking about today jill had a question come in um so let's I did um not that it matters to the podcast but there will be no further anonymous question boxes on jill's instagram i'll tell you that for free uh i don't even know how to do that so it's like um, a different app you have to download which is fine but let me tell you um the men have really been taking advantage of my anonymous question box and i my pride and joy is that my following on social media is like 95 percent female less yeah. than five percent male and that five percent is really rude in it for everyone. I got so many whack questions come through on the weekend and I said, yeah, this will be the last time an anonymous question box goes up. I promise you that. Yeah. They're either mean and, or weird, never helpful. And 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 truly, um, uh, we're kind of almost, uh, I think that the trend is is on, on the outs, but the hot topic on most social media platforms in um, the last month or so has been if you were in the woods, would you, if you were in, lost in the woods, would you rather come across a bear or a random man? And you wonder why we chose the bear. I'm going to show you one of the questions. You can't even, you can't even have a random question box where nobody knows it's you without losing that privilege. I'm going to show you one That's of the questions. That's why we chose the bear. I'm not going to read it on the pod because it's not PG, but I'm going to show it to you just so you can understand why there will well, be no know. further <gasps> anonymous question. Well, box. YouTube just saw that. Oh, yeah. Well, now you have to watch um, YouTube to figure out what the question is. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that question came through and I said, yeah, there'll be no further anonymous question boxes. First of all, first of all none of your freaking business. And also, nobody's business really <laughs> men's brains are fascinating to me because that like how did you even think of that anywho i digress the actual question that came through a couple weeks ago um was let me find it um <clears throat> hold on hold please uh found it um this was the whole question i've been doing strength training four to five times a week eating at a slight calorie deficit i've lost nine pounds Keep in mind, I don't know how long we've been doing any of these things. I've lost nine pounds and dropped inches, but most days I'm so bloated I look pregnant. What am I doing wrong? I also always am almost always constipated. So we got a few things to break down in this question. How's your, biggest, how's your fiber intake? Yeah, the biggest thing we're going to talk about is like, how do you know when something's not working or how are we measuring progress? Like, are we measuring it in terms of health? Are we measuring it in terms of like physical progress? Because if I separate my two coachings, which I don't do for a reason, but if I was to separate holistic and fat loss and just focus on one at a time, 
the fat loss side of this is technically going great. The holistic health side is going terrible. So which one do we focus on? How do we know? What do we change? What's your take? I mean, given that I don't coach the fat loss side, um, you know, I, I mean, we all know that bloating doesn't feel very good either. So my brain is like, it doesn't matter how many pounds down you are, you probably feel like garbage. <laughs> um, and and then the rest then the rest of it is I'm kind of like, well, what I mean, this isn't a question that I can really answer, but I'm like, why is this happening? What are we doing that is causing this? Because that's not normal, right? Unless it was normal before, and that's not really normal anyways, right? Like it's it's just something that happens to you all the time, it doesn't make it normal. Um either way. Yeah. My question would be like, what you eating? Yeah. And I think this is a big problem I run into as a fat loss coach is we don't focus on health before we move into fat loss. So whether the like bloating and constipation was always happening and we just were like, eh, whatever, focused on fat loss, or maybe those things started to happen while you were in a fat loss phase, either way, it means there's something else we need to address. Um, and like you said, I agree. If even if, though we're losing weight, losing inches, you can't tell me you feel good being bloated and constipated all the time. So are we really reaping the benefits of that fat loss if we feel like garbage digestion wise every single day? Probably not. I would assume ideally with fat loss, your goal is to feel better in your body. And that's clearly not happening, even though fat loss is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have so many more questions. I'm sure you have way more, but um yeah i think you nailed it like it might be working but it's not really working um and i guess the question is like how do we know when something's not working right how long do we give it bloating and constipation man i wouldn't give it more than a couple days to be perfectly honest <laughs> um, just as a me thing <laughs> there's a um, lot of people that walk around with digestive issues 24 yeah. seven. and i think that's as you kind of touched on we just get used to it at some point and we just mm -hmm. think like oh, this is my life and this is what i have to deal with um but i think the like biggest oh, i thing, just have tummy troubles <laughs> like that's yeah. and that's like you're like okay with it i mean it's also you're okay with it it's also a thing on social media like people are like hot girls have stomach issues and i'm like okay why though? <laughs> you were not supposed to just have stomach issues all the it's, time. And as somebody who in the last couple it's weeks, the, um, it's that the 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 not water stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as somebody who like I've had stomach issues in the last couple of weeks, granted, self-inflicted. I was drinking far too much coffee on an empty stomach. Nobody alert the authorities. I know I preach it, but I accidentally slipped into the habit of drinking coffee on an empty stomach um so like self-inflicted but like that was maybe two weeks and i was like okay enough we gotta fix this so mm -hmm. if this has been ongoing for a long time i can't imagine it's that pleasant for you um and, well, and i think like we i think sometimes we i always feel like this when i'm sick and i think it translates well is like you almost forget what it feels like to be well do you know when you have like a cold and you're like, will I ever not have a stuffy nose, right? Yeah. And, you, and even though it's only been like five days, you're like, this is my life now. Um, I think that sometimes it's really easy to be like, well, I just have tummy troubles. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, and then before you know it, like months and months or even like, a, like years have gone by and you're like, I don't know what it feels like to feel good. This is just how I am. Um, and we're here to tell you that like, you deserve better than that. <laughs> That's um, one of my favorite parts of helping people with their gut health is when we finally get it to a place where you're not dealing with daily issues. I almost always mm -hmm. get it. It's like, oh my God, is this how I'm supposed to feel? And I'm like, yeah, bro, we're not supposed to be 
in pain, unsure what we can eat, doing all the things all the time. Um, when we're talking about fat loss and gut health is no matter which way you swing it, fat loss is a stress on the body, whether it's productive, mm -hmm. healthy, you're doing it the correct air quotes way, it's still a stress on your body. And when we're high stress, we usually have poor gut health. And when we have poor gut health, we're usually high stress. And you know what doesn't help fat loss? Stress. So then we get in this nice little hamster wheel of like, the stress from the fat loss is causing poor gut health, which is causing more stress because you can't tell me having crappy digestion every day isn't stressing you out at some point, which is going to impact fat loss, which is going to impact gut health. And now we're in this fun hamster wheel where something's got to give. And it might be as simple as like, you know what? I'm not going to like stop doing the habits I'm doing, but I'm going to put a pause on continuing fat loss until I sort out my gut health. Because I also guarantee you fat loss gets easier when gut health improves. Yeah, 100%. Like, I, and I think this is why, like, you know, like, why it's really important that when something is off, that you find somebody who's a professional who can help you. Because, like, you know, like we said, it's all over social media right like i've seen i've seen like small businesses have like sweatshirts that say like my tummy hurts but i'm being really brave about it and i'm like or your tummy doesn't have to hurt we could just not have gut health issues and then you can be brave for other reasons i say that all the time as a socially anxious girl i say it to my friends all the time i'm like i was already brave once today i'm not doing it twice but like being brave for that reason and being brave because your stomach hurts every day we don't have to have a stomach that hurts every day and then yeah. you can save your bravery for something that's worth it true 100 yeah. percent. um where would you even though you don't do fat loss let's say someone comes to you uh let's switch it a little bit for you someone comes to you with a goal to improve running but they're having consistent gut health issues, would you still encourage them to push their running and keep working towards that? Or what would your kind of game plan be? Well, that depends on the gut issues during the run. Let's say, okay, here, I'm gonna hypothetical for you. <laughs> Pretend I'm not me and I actually run. Um, <laughs> I come to you wanting to, I don't have a race date, but I want to be able to run 15 kilometers this summer for sure that sounds like an appropriate number um but i'm having a really hard time figuring out my nutrition because when i eat in the morning before i have to run my stomach hurts and then i have to go to the bathroom and then i have we can't run okay so first of all that totally depends on what you're eating in the morning like if you're waking up and having like eggs for breakfast, yeah, your stomach's gonna feel like shit on your run because what happens is when you're running, all your blood is in your legs. <laughs> and when you're digesting, your stomach wants some blood to help with your digestion. So if you're trying to do two things at once, something is going to give. And what's gonna happen is you're either gonna feel like shit in your legs or, and more likely you're going to feel like shit in your stomach because your legs are like, uh-uh, no, no, we're, we're doing things and it's going to, and your eggs are just going to sit there and you'll be like, Bleh. um, I would, I would start with like, if it's only first thing in the morning, is this one running is best for us? I don't know. Um, yeah, there's a lot more that like needs to happen, but like if this is a digestion thing every single morning, something ain't right. And my first move as me would be like, I need to know, I need a little food journal of what's going on, first of all. Um, and if I look at it and I don't see anything that stands out right away that I can advise on, I'm sending them to you or to my dietitian friend um, to look a little further. Um, because it's not, it's not part of my scope to diagnose and, um, 
and figure that kind of stuff out. But if it was something simple like instead of eggs for breakfast, if I'm going for an early run, I have half a banana and I can tolerate that. Cool. It was, it's not you. It's yep. the food. Yep. Like if we can make a couple swaps and you feel better, great. But if we make a couple swaps and it's like, eh, it doesn't fix it right away. It's not the food. It's you. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, the, the line that I have had to find is the, when is it not my business? No, it's my business, but when is it not up to me to mm -hmm. help anymore? And as of recently, I've had a few people who come to me with problems and I'm like, that's not my job. Sure. And I think it's really important that you, when you're working with a coach, you make sure you know when they're bullshitting you. Yep. Um, because it would be really easy for me to be like, I'll oh, just like do a bunch of Googling and see what I can come up with. But that is a dangerous slippery slope. Um, and I think the and my insurance doesn't cover that. <laughs> and the responsible coaches will be like, yep, yeah, not my thing anymore, but here's... I don't have many traders in my network, but I have enough to cover my bases. If like I can't do yeah. it, I got like one coach I trust with most areas. So I think any responsible coach would be like, hey, not my area. Um, but I think the biggest thing as a gut health and fat loss coach that you said is like, figure it out. It's not a matter of like, oh, suck it up, keep going. Or like, yeah, that's normal. You'll be fine. It's a little bit of a process of elimination. Like, Even when I'm helping with clients, with gut health, that is the first thing. Is there a rhyme and a reason as to why your stomach is upset? Is it a certain food you eat? Is it a certain time of the day? Is it a certain time of the month? If all of those are no, and it doesn't matter what you're eating, when you're eating it, or where you are in your cycle, then we probably need to do some gut health stuff. But I use the same process. Like if it's, oh yeah, when I eat first thing in the morning, high fat, my stomach doesn't like it. Cool, your stomach's probably not ready to digest that yet. Or when I eat late at night, my stomach always hurts. Cool, let's try to get away from eating at night. Probably also means we're not eating enough in the day. Is it a certain time in your cycle? Again, teetering on the line of normal, our cycles are a big hormone change. So there's probably gonna be something but if there's no rhyme or reason, no real answer to it, then we just need to put a pause on our other goals, work on some gut health stuff, and we can come back to it versus pushing through, not achieving the goals we're working towards and continuing to worsen our gut health. Then we're just going to have way more work to do in six months or whenever we finally choose to pause. Yeah. And like, that's not to say that as a runner, you will never get you know, like an upset stomach or anything like that, but it should be few and far between. Yeah. And you should be able to nail exactly what it was. When I think what a lot of people don't, and I said this in my stories this week, is that endurance training, doesn't matter what the modality is, it's not, it's all about learning about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like how much you can tolerate, what foods you can tolerate, how long you can go for. It's all about learning where your limits are in whatever the category is. Whatever, it doesn't matter what the sport is. It could be cycling, running, whatever. But if you are not in tune with what's happening, like if you get back from your long run and I'm like, how's your fueling? And you're like, what fuel? I'm like, mission failed. Yeah. I don't care that you went out and ran for two hours. You ran went out for run for two hours with zero water. How yeah. do you feel the rest of the day? Like crap. Because now you're in a deficit and you're fighting to get back. Mm -hmm. I want to know, I don't care actually how far or how fast you run. I want to know what you ate. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> and I how you feel after. That's the biggest thing with any, when we're working towards like any goal and there's other things coming up, is it self-inflicted? As tough love mm -hmm. as that might sound. Like, did you do yourself dirty? I know yeah. going to have to go to the bathroom. And my stomach's not going to feel great if I drink coffee on an empty stomach. So then it's self-inflicted and I don't really get to turn around and be like, I don't know why this is happening. Like, yeah, you probably do. It's just taking a look at those actual yeah. habits. Um, but yeah, any gut health things are not normal. They're common. They're far too easily accepted. Um, but if you're 
even if you have a fat loss goal, even if you have a physique goal, even if you have a performance goal, health still has to be considered in that equation or eventually your other goals are going to stop happening and you're going to probably pretend to not know why, but it's most likely because well, we're like, ignoring the health things going on. You know, let's remember the root reason for most people to have like a fat loss goal or like a running goal or something like that is they actually want to be healthier. But if your if the foundation of your health is not catching up to the performance part of it, then what's the point? That's kind of where I'm at is like, yeah, like you could run. Yeah. Like maybe you're a really fast runner, but like if you, if you can't take in any fuel or if you can't, you know, you can't do a 5k without almost pooping your pants, like <laughs> what are you doing? Right. That's, like it's too dress. Yeah. Um, I, I saw a, um, I saw a reel today that I shared on my stories and it was like, um, it was something like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull it up and read it. Cause the captain was like fire. And it was like, um, I was like, where did it go? Cause she like DM'd me and was like, said, uh, a fancy warm up before your run is great and all, but if you aren't feeling, you're mo most likely wasting your time. Yeah, which is exactly like if you don't if you don't have adequate fuel, if you're and obviously if you have like bloating, constipation, there is something wrong with your absorption, mm -hmm. which is hurting your ability to do the performing thing. I know enough to know that that is true. Yeah. Um, so if you can't use the fuel that you're putting in, whether you're actually putting in the right fuel or not, doesn't even matter at this point because your body can't use it in the way that you're supposed to. Um, personal story about that. Um, ooh, a while ago now, like not quite 10 years ago, but I had like really poor um, gut health. I went through a phase where I was like gluten-free, hardcore and whatever. And um and the other part of that was that i was actually like getting sick all the time like sinus infections like things like that mm -hmm. and when we got to like the root of it it was like it didn't matter how much like protein or carbs i could get in my body because if my gut couldn't absorb it there's no way that it could use the protein to a recover from workouts but also b protein is um for lack of a better term like an immune booster so if you can't absorb anything, you might as well. I was also like, there would be times when I'd be like really bloated back then too. But like looking back, I was like, man, how did I like live like that? Because I, as we said before, like you get to a point where like, you don't know, you don't remember what it feels like to feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and like now where I'm at, man, if, if that happened to me, I would be like, something's wrong. Like, it would be like a day it wouldn't even take a day i'd be like what happened well that's <laughs> I, we were that was me with my gut health it was like we were in vancouver and i was like something's not right and i was like oh maybe because it's work it's because we're away and then we got home and it took me two days of clocking that i was drinking coffee on an empty stomach to be like yeah this is me i gotta fix this <laughs> so once you know what your actual normal should be it gets far easier to clock when something's not right when we're constantly dealing with health issues and digestion issues and all these other things it gets really hard to figure out what's yeah. normal what what how we're supposed to feel um so being able to pay attention to that is really important um, just pulling it back to the actual question because the biggest thing was like what am i doing wrong i don't think you're doing anything wrong necessarily and i will re-answer this question with link to the podcast when it goes up just so the person who asked it can see that we did a whole episode <laughs> um i don't think you're doing anything wrong per se i think we just need to reshift our priorities a little bit and probably pay attention to some gut health stuff first again keep strength training keep doing your thing maybe come out of a calorie deficit a little bit but spend some time figuring out what is causing that such digestive upset um figure that out and then i guarantee you fat loss gets a lot easier and you're actually going to feel good in your body 
and be able to enjoy the work you're putting in to create that fat loss because you actually reap all the benefits, not just like, yeah, I'm skinnier, but I feel like garbage because then you're not actually getting the result you were looking for in the beginning. Um, and that goes for anything. If you have multiple goals going on at the same time, but health is taking a hit, that's a sign we probably need to adjust those other goals for the time being, focus on health, and then we can get back to whatever else we were up to. Absolutely. I don't have anything to add because that was perfection. Thanks. Um, <laughs> if you are sitting there being like, yeah, that's me. Like I have multiple goals going on. One's working, the other's not. Send help. Reach out to either of us. If it's gut health, I've got you. Um, but reach out to either of us. We will point you in the direction of one or the other if it's not our thing if you're a runner with gut health issues you can come see me first and then jess can make you the fastest runner in the world we can make it a duo thing Ooh, that's a bold claim <laughs> well you heard it here first so better figure out how to make that <laughs> uh, but as always if you're like i don't know who to message just go for the podcast account at lattes and lifting podcast um i manage it so I will point you in the right direction. Or if you know who you need, you can find me at coachjill.april on TikTok and Instagram, but don't DM me on TikTok. I never read those because it's always weirdos. Um, so just DM me on Instagram. <laughs> start by, start your DM with, I'm not a weirdo. This is related to the podcast. Um, Anything <laughs> on TikTok is just about like, it's, True. men offering me money but none of them I, so i'm like I, on, someone be real i'll take your thousands of dollars a week if you're real <laughs> i made i made a i made a really good comment on a video of like it was an early comment of like a popular a pretty popular creator and the amount of likes on my comment you can't turn those notifications off no nope. i'm like i wish i had never made it <laughs> And then if you're the most like comment, it goes to the top of all their comments yes. so the more people see it. Yeah, tough yes. to be internet famous. Um, anyways, yeah, for my one comment on some doctor's video. Um, anyway, if you're looking for me and you want to become the fastest runner in the world, I can send you to that person who can help you with that. <laughs> um, I if, have if a person looking, for that. If you're looking to be more on the mediocre side of running, that's really my niche. Um, but you can find me for the They're really solid day me to become a mediocre runner. My clients know. My clients know. Um, Listen, you'll be a better runner than me, and that's all that matters. Yeah, if you want, if your goal is just to be better than Jill, then I'm your coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for sending us questions. If you have any topics you need support with, you know we love to do a free episode for you literally coaching you through everything so just send us your questions we're happy to do it um and we will catch you guys next time bye